Hi, I'm Ralph, the Aegis Runner, and welcome to episode five in the Long Run series. So you finished a long run and you're feeling great. Confidence is high and your legs feel strong. So next week, you decide you can push a little bit and add a few miles, and then it hits you. Fatigue lingers, your stride feels off, and maybe a twinge appears. Sound familiar? The truth is building endurance isn't just about adding distance. It's about progressing with science and patience so your body adapts without breaking down. Today, we'll look at how to safely extend your long runs, the right way to go farther, stay stronger, and keep enjoying the journey for years to come. Every time you run long, you're sending a signal to your body, hey, we need more capacity. Muscles, tendons, bones, and even your nervous system respond by getting a little stronger, but only if you increase the stress gradually enough for them to keep up. Push too hard, too soon, and you outpace that rebuild cycle. That's when overuse injuries show up. It's not the distance that hurts you, it's the rate of change. So instead of asking, how far can I go, ask, how can I build distance safely so my body has time to adapt? For most runners, that means raising weekly mileage slowly, spacing hard runs with adequate recovery, and treating the long run as a training stimulus, not a test of toughness. Your sweet spot is a distance that challenges you, but still lets you recover within a few days. Too short, and you're not stimulating endurance adaptations. Too long, and you risk digging a hole you can't fill before your next quality session. For half marathoners, that's usually 10 to 12 miles. For marathoners, 18 to 20 is plenty for most training blocks. More isn't always better. It's often just more stress. The goal is to find the point where you finish your long run feeling tired, but not trashed. If you're still sore four days later, you've gone too far too soon. And for older runners like me and many of you in my community, that sweet spot may shift slightly shorter especially when life stress and recovery time come into play. Okay, if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Now, you've heard me talk about many times about the 10% rule. Don't increase your mileage by more than 10% per week. Now, there is a risk to that, a risk of injury if you increase it too much. And I did a video recently on that. If you've not seen that, I'll link it down below. And the 10% rule is a good starting point, but it's not a law. Research shows that some runners can handle a bit more if they're well-conditioned while well, others need less. Think of 10% as a speed limit sign, not a goal. If you're running 30 miles a week, adding three is fine. But if you're coming back from injury or you're older like me, add less and alternate build weeks with cutback weeks. Your body cares more about consistency than numbers. Here's what's actually happening when you build distance. Your capillaries expand. Mitochondria, your little energy factories, multiply. And your muscles learn to burn fuel more efficiently. That's why the long run is called the king of endurance workouts. But those adaptations don't happen while you run. They happen while you recover. Each long run is like a construction project. You break down the old material so your body can build it back stronger. If you keep stacking new projects without laying the last one set, things crack. Now let's look at three proven ways to safely build your long run distance without overtraining. Method one is a gradual build method. It's what I've always used and, and many of us use. And this is where you add a mile, roughly five to 8% to your long run each week for two to three weeks. Then take a cutback week where you drop down about 20 to 30% to allow your body to adapt before climbing again. For example, week one, you might do eight miles, week two, nine miles, week three, 10 miles. And then in that fourth week, drop back to eight. So you go eight, nine, 10, back to eight. Method number two is the alternating week method. Instead of increasing weekly, alternate between a long and a short long run. For example, you might do 10 miles this week and then drop down to eight. Then the following week, go even higher up to 11 and then drop down to nine. This approach builds endurance while preventing cumulative fatigue. Perfect for older runners or anyone needing more recovery time. And then method three is a step back cycle. This is great for race prep. Every third or fourth week, step your distance down to about 60 to 70% of your recent long run. These recovery weeks help muscles, tendons, and energy systems consolidate gains before your next leap forward. Now, whichever method you choose, the key is intentional progression. Stress followed by recovery, not randomness. That's how you go longer and stay healthy season after season. Now, it's also important to listen to your body. It's always giving you feedback. You just, just got to listen. Good fatigue feels like muscle heaviness that eases with movement. Bad fatigue lingers, shows up as joint pain or sleep disruption, and signals you're overdoing it. You can also track your resting heart rate, or if you have a watch like mine that does heart rate variability, if they're consistently elevated, you're not recovered. Even mood and motivation are clues. If you dread your run, that's your nervous system asking for rest. Learn to respect these signals is how you run stronger for decades, not just months. Now for runners over 50, recovery takes longer and that's okay. You can still run strong mileage with smart spacing. 
Try alternating big weekends with short, long runs. For example, one week, do 12 miles, and next eight or nine. That variation keeps your legs fresh and reduces injury risk. Also, it's really important to prioritize sleep and nutrition. That's where the repair happens. Protein and anti-inflammatory foods speed muscle healing. And if your body says, not today, take the extra day. You'll come back stronger. Now, each new distance you conquer isn't just a physical milestone. It's a proof of mental resilience. The best runners don't force progress. They earn it through consistency and recovery. Remember, your next breakthrough is built on patience, not push. So let's recap. You need to progress gradually. Respect the adaptation curve, the healing process. And give yourself time to recover fully. That's where growth happens. And above all, listen to your body. It's your best coach. Do that and you'll run farther with less fatigue, more confidence, and a body that stays ageless. Next time in the Long Run Series, we'll explore how to pace your long runs for maximum benefit, the science of effort and efficiency. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please scroll down and hit that like icon. And if you're new here, I would love to have you stick around and be a subscriber. Please click that icon also. Again, I'm Ralph, the Ageless Runner. I'm here to help you run smarter, go longer, and stay ageless. Thank you.